You've learned about the different tools available to you when building your automations. Everything from communication elements like emails and SMS messages to condition filters and splits. Now it's time to put it all together in a useful way. And that's where this video comes in. I'm gonna show you how to use the tools you have to create a fully functioning new lead magnet and nurturing automation. Now, if you've never built something like this before, let me talk you through a little bit of the strategy behind it. First off, a lead magnet is a freebie that you offer on your website in exchange for someone filling out a form and providing you with their contact information, usually an email address. Typically, the freebie is something like an ebook, white paper, or a free chapter of your book. You get the idea. You'll often have more than one freebie, since they're a great way to address the different problems that your product solves. So for example, if you're running a marketing agency, you might offer an ebook on strategies for generating new leads. Then you could have a different ebook about increasing conversion rates in your nurturing funnels. The idea is that you'll learn a little bit more about your customers and their needs when they request one of these lead magnets. Once you get a lead's email address, you can leverage what you already learned about them and start sending them compelling offers. If they don't take you up on a couple of these, you can take a step back and pivot to sending them a series of educational emails designed to nurture them towards a sale. Here's how to create a lead magnet and nurturing automation. First, you'll create your triggers. Then, you'll deliver relevant follow-up. You'll build long-term lead nurturing funnels. And finally, you'll add your purchase goal. Let's begin. First, you'll create your triggers. Let's start with a form fill-out trigger. To add a new trigger, find the Contact Submits a Form option. Then, use the drop-down menu to select a form. If it's on an Entreport page, find and select the form on the page. You won't need a condition for this trigger because everyone who fills out your form should get your free value item. Don't forget about your settings on the left side of the screen. For who can activate this trigger, select any contact and account because you want new contacts who aren't already on this automation to be able to activate it. The if contact is already on the map then setting is up to you. If a contact fills out the lead magnet form more than once, what do you want to happen? You have two options here. Maybe you want them to receive the email again. After all, people can be forgetful. In this case, set it to add here again when triggered or move here. Now, as we've learned, if you add here again, the contact will then be on the map twice and will get all of these emails twice. So it's probably better to just move them here and then let them start all over. Or maybe you don't want them to get the ebook a second time at all. In that case, set it to ignore this trigger. But come on, if somebody asked for your ebook and gave you their email address, you don't want to just ignore them. So let's just leave this on add here again. Now it's time to follow up with your leads. Let's start by giving them what they opted in for. You'll do this with an email element. Go ahead and add the element, and under send contacts this email, pick the message that sends them the goods. Then click done. Beneath that, put a one day wait step so you don't send all your follow up at the same moment. In the settings, select some time passes from the dropdown and put in one day. Now let's set up a condition to remove customers from the rest of your nurture funnel, because you don't want to make existing customers go through your entire lead nurturing sequence of emails again. Add the condition and select has ordered a certain amount of a product. The easiest way to do this would be to select greater than or equal to, then one, and in the last field put any product but you can use whatever settings best fit your needs. Just remember that your end goal is removing contacts who have already bought your products from receiving your sales emails. On the yes side of the condition, you'll want to add an exit step so that all of your customers are removed from this automation and won't receive any unnecessary communication from you in the future. Next, you'll create your second email. This is your first opportunity to actually offer these leads something. On the no side of this condition, add another email. This is where you'll want to start talking to leads about your offerings in a way that makes sense based on what you know about them so far. So, if a lead has opted in for a lead nurturing ebook, it would make sense to talk about how your agency can help with increasing conversion rates from lead to sale. Add another email element, select the message from the dropdown, and then move on to the next step. But remember the wait step so that you don't annoy people with too much communication all at once. So, insert another wait. Different industries communicate with their audiences differently. For some companies, it may be standard to communicate daily, while in others, once a week is more than enough. So be strategic. And at this point, you could include more emails and wait steps in this automation. You can use as many as you feel are necessary to warm those leads up. 
For our example here, you'll send a total of three emails. You'll need to repeat this entire sequence of emails for each of your other two triggers, since the ebook you're delivering and the subsequent emails will be different. The easiest way to do this is to go all the way up to your first email step and drag the arrow into the what happens next space beneath the other two triggers. When you let go, you'll be asked if you want to copy just this one element or this element and everything beneath it. You're going to want to use that second option. Then all you have to do is go through each email step and insert the email to be sent to those who meet the criteria of each of the other triggers. Now, on to step three. Let's add a long-term lead nurture funnel. So if you've been in business a while, you know that most of your leads aren't gonna take you up on the first few offers that you throw at them. And this is where a lot of businesses start to fail. They figure that they shot their shot and they leave the rest to rot. But this is a mistake. Maybe it's just not the right time for that lead. Maybe they're still sussing out their issue and figuring out potential solutions. The point is there's still value in your leads who haven't converted yet. The easiest way to not drop the ball here is to build a long-term series of emails designed to keep your business top of mind. Now, while these leads are worth following up with, they're probably not worth writing three different sets of emails for. But you can get a little more generic in your email content at this point. So, let's build a single automation path and then bring all three paths together. You'll start by adding a series of wait steps and emails. But remember that your lead has cooled off quite a bit and might not be as interested in your business. So these waits should probably be longer. If you're sending out daily emails before, consider changing to every three, five, or seven days. You wanna peak their interest periodically, but not be pushy and cause them to opt out of your stuff. The length of this funnel depends on how many emails you have written, but I've seen them last anywhere from months to many years. Once you've added your wait and email steps, you need to bring the other two automation paths together. You'll do this by using go to elements. Insert a go to beneath the other two paths and then drag the arrow to reconnect with the first flow on that first step of the long-term lead nurturing funnel. Now all of this marketing and keeping in touch is great, but don't forget your ultimate goal. You want your leads to buy your product. The best way to measure how successful you are with these various efforts is to simply place a purchase goal at the end of the entire funnel. Your goal should be set to purchase this product and then you'll select the product from the dropdown. Keep in mind that you can add more than one product if you want by inserting additional purchases product goals. Note that these goals should be set to move here when achieved and any contact on this map. This will make sure that any marketing steps are skipped if a contact purchases your product at any point before this goal. With this goal attached to the bottom of your automation, you're actively monitoring how successful your three different offers are at converting leads as well as how your long-term lead nurturing efforts are working out. You'll be able to see all that data in automation performance mode after it's published. And that's our last step, to publish your automation and get the whole thing live and running. Nice work. Now you've gotten a fully functioning new lead nurturing system. You can use this to collect new leads, send them highly targeted offer emails, then follow up with a longer term lead nurturing campaign, all while keeping track of who buys your product along the way. Now that you've built a super functional automation, let's look at some other features that will benefit you as a marketer.